What's up, Passive Tribe? It's your personal trainer, Coach Kozak. I'm Claudia, and this is a kettlebell workout for beginners. We'll work your full body to burn fat and build lean muscle. There are no repeats today, so we'll be performing just one set of each exercise. Let's go. Before we begin today's workout, we are going to start with a warm up, mm -hmm. preparing our body for the work to come. Our first move is going to be a bird dog. Let's move to the floor. We're going to get into a quadruped position. So we're on all fours for this one on our hands and knees. I'm going to take my right hand, I'm going to bring it to my left knee, and then extend from my right arm and my left leg. Return back down. Now, opposite side, left arm, right leg. So I'm extending that arm straight up squeezing my back of the top and then with my leg i'm kicking that heel straight back so you're not kicking up but almost like you're trying to put your heel through the wall behind you leaning to a nice straight line from your fist all the way down to your foot keeping that core tight and engaged throughout shoulders stay square squeezing your glutes and upper back up at the top a great one to just warm up that whole posterior chain. Alternating between the two here for five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, we're actually gonna stay in a similar position for our next one. We're gonna warm up our wrists. They're gonna get a lot of work holding those Ooh, kettlebells for today. For sure. So let's start with our fingers pointed forward and I'm going to gently rock forward, keeping my straight arms stretching those wrists dynamically also you can feel those forearm flexors work in here keep your fingers spread apart and if you feel good here then you can move those hands closer to you and that'll allow you to even get a little more range of motion on it and these stretches we're taking it's about 85 90 percent of what you're capable of you want to feel good but you don't want to feel pain Last one. And now a similar move, but we're gonna switch our hand position. So we're gonna turn our hands over and let's start with our hands a little closer to us here. And our fingers are uh, facing ourselves. And now we're going to rock back. Good. Again. But yeah. if we don't feel much of a stretch, we can move our hands further away from us, correct? Exactly. To increase the intensity, go ahead and bring those arms out further in front of you. Depending on that mobility level, flexibility of those wrists and forearm flexors here. Don't want to get too crazy. For three, two, one, zero. All right, we are going to move up onto our feet for the next one. Going to perform a two for one move. It's a squat to a shoulder extension or overhead extension. Our feet are hip width apart. We're going to start with a full range of motion squat, going down as far as you can with our arms relaxed at our side, break at the hips, then the knees, good posture up. Now with straight arms, extend those arms overhead, back to your side and up. Sitting back nice and deep, keep your feet flat on the floor. We don't want to rock back onto our heels or fall forward onto our toes. Head up, chest up as best as we can. This one's really testing that mobility throughout your spine, shoulders, hips, ankle mobility. Hitting multiple muscle groups with this one. Every time I think my mobility has improved, I do this move. Well, I, and I'm humbled. <laughs> that's all right. We all have something still to <laughs> work on. We can always improve. Never ends. Working out really never gets easier. You just get a little better at it. For three, two, one zero all right 
Ready to go, Claudia? I'm ready. I'm warm. All right. I'm feeling warm too. So as we mentioned in the introduction, we're only going to do one set of each exercise, a lot of compound moves today. And so for each of those sets, they're going to be between 45 to 60 seconds of work, followed by 15 seconds of rest. And then we'll move on to the next exercise. We need a heavier weight for the first one. Going to get started with a lower body move, a kettlebell sumo deadlift. We're going to have our feet wider than hip width, a little point out on our toes, shoulders are back, good posture, breaking at my hips first, then my knees, sitting back, good posture, and then come up. We're going to do this one for 45 seconds in total. Ready? Yep. Let's get after it. So again, it's only that one set here. So put it all out there for every move. We're going to try to alternating, be alternating complementary exercises. So when our legs are working, our upper body's resting and vice versa, keeping that pace up. Remembering to breathe throughout the whole movement. That's it. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. Feet stay flat. Sitting back in those hips every time. Let's go. 10 more seconds. You got it. The legs are already starting to feel good. Oh, yeah. In five, four, three, two, one, and break. All right. Next up, we need one kettlebell, a light, probably a lighter kettlebell. We're going to perform a one arm kettlebell press. So I have that kettlebell resting on the back of my hand and right here in between my thumb and index finger in the corner, starting in a rack position, core is tight, feet are hip width apart, hand either out or on your hip. We're going to press straight up. Don't rotate your hand. Ah, thanks for the reminder. And then return back to the <laughs> chin and bring in that uh, bicep by your ear. We're going to do 30 seconds each side. Ready? Yes. And go. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. We don't want to lose core on this one. Making sure that core is engaged and braced throughout the whole move here. Be nice and tight. Temptation is to be loose, but fight that temptation. Your hips should be directly underneath your rib cage. Switching sides in three, two, one. Switch. All right, very good. Switching and go. No downtime. Again, controlling that way down as well. Finishing the best you can with that bicep by your ear. Working your shoulder as well as your tricep. And then again, all the moves today are going to work your core in a sneaky way. Oh, yeah. Ten more seconds. Let's go. Keep pushing. Or pressing, I should say. <laughs> there it is. Two. And three. Two, one, and break. All right. Okay, so I'm going to keep the same weight for this next one. We're going Likewise. to perform a split stance row. So let's get into that split stance. My feet are a little oh, shoulder width apart. I'm stepping back about one and a half foot lengths back. Opposite hands on my hip, bending over at a 45 degree angle. Shoulders are square. I'm going to pull back from that elbow. So not here from the, the, the bell, but here from the elbow every time 30 seconds each side ready go again continuing to breathe throughout and that setup is so important yeah the both knees are bent back is straight no rounding of your back why well, sometimes it's nice to work out in front of a mirror just to make sure you can kind of check yourself for sure or even sometimes recording yourself yeah that's just good to tool. see if you don't have access to a mirror see what that looks like. We're switching in three, two, one, and switch sides. Right, same move, opposite side. Right into it. That's it. And again, this one is going to work your legs a little bit. Yes, the primary movers are your biceps, forearms, and lats. That's that big back muscle under your arm. But your legs are working just to maintain this position throughout our lower back as well. Again, keeping that core tight and embraced. Ten more seconds, Tribe. Let's go. Pushing through in five, four, three, two, one, and break. All right, we are moving back to a lower body move next. I'm gonna go a little heavier on this one. We're going to move into a goblet reverse lunge. Ooh so I'm grabbing that dumbbell with the bell up from either side here in that goblet position. Elbows are in, 
Feet are starting together. I'm gonna step back with my right leg, drop both knees to a 90, return back up. Now left leg, back up. Doing this one for 45 seconds. Hit it. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. How many can you get here? Keeping that proper posture throughout, right? Don't allow yourself to be coming forward and breaking here. Good posture, upright throughout. You're achieving that with that tight core. Inhale, exhale. There it is, come on. Try not to bounce that back knee off the floor. You can touch the floor, but don't bounce it, control it. Ten more seconds. Let's go, push through. Work on our hamstrings, quads and glutes. Four, three, two, one, and break. Ah, excellent. I'm gonna use a lighter kettlebell for this next one. We're gonna move into an upper body compound move, the kettlebell hammer curl to a press. We're gonna grab that kettlebell from the horn on both sides with the bell pointing down. Starting with our shoulders back, forming a hammer curl all the way up. Now we're gonna press overhead with that bell up. It's gonna provide some extra challenge. Return back down all the way. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four for 45 seconds. Ready? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. I have a sneaking suspicion. We're gonna really start to feel those arms working by the end of this one. Oh yeah. Get that blood flowing. If it feels too easy, maybe you need to up the weight just a tiny bit, but towards the end of the 45 seconds, you should really be feeling the burn. Ah, that's a great point. Thank you for that, Claudia. You know, sometimes we get comments, people say, oh, this workout was too easy. Well, no offense, but that's your fault. You weren't using enough <laughs> weight. Increase the weight and it will immediately increase the intensity. That's or right. if it's too hard and you can't make it through the set, decrease your weight. That's the beauty of resistance training. It is so subjective, right? Your fitness level. No two bodies are the same. Keep it cranking here, not much left. Nope, five, four, three, two, one, and break. All right, I'm gonna go a little heavier for the next, this next one. We're gonna give you two different variations for this posterior chain movement. Mine's a little more dynamic, Claudia's is more controlled. I'm gonna start with my feet a little wider than shoulder width apart. Grabbing that kettlebell, I'm going to hike that kettlebell between my legs, a little bend my knees, and then hips forward, performing a kettlebell swing. And I'm doing a kettlebell RDL. So I have my feet hip width apart, pushing my bum towards the back in a hinge, dropping the bell just below my knees, and coming right back up to starting position. You decide which is more appropriate for you. Ready, here we go, and begin. This one for 45 seconds. Both of us on the way down are hinging at those hips, almost like we're trying to touch our glutes to the wall behind us. That's right. And for the RDL, you should really feel that stretch in your hamstrings, even up to your glutes. And when you come back up, make sure you're not overextending at the hip, but you're starting, you're stopping, and you want to stop just like this, right? Look like a nice vertical stick. And actually, everything you just said also applies to the swing. Squeezing those glutes at the top. Inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Keeping our shoulders nice and square, head in line with our back. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. Woo. All right, I'm going lighter for this next one, working our core and shoulders with a kettlebell halo. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and grab that kettlebell from the horns, that bell up. Now I'm gonna bring the bell to the side of my head, arm goes up and around, and then opposite way. So alternating to the right and then to the left, keeping that core tight, 360 oh, degree yeah. brace all the way around. Ready, and begin. As I said, this one's working your core as well as those shoulders. Depending on your shoulder mobility, you might not be able to get it quite as far around the head as we are. Doing the best you can, and don't be afraid to go lighter if you need to. Don't hold your breath. Remember keeping that core nice and tight. It should not be moving. So I don't want to see any swings like this. It's not a dance move. The only thing that you're moving is the bell and your arms up and over your head. You should be thankful it's not a dance move because trust me, none of us want to see Coach Kozak dancing. Absolutely not. <laughs> Glad my wife agrees on that I can one. Vouch. 
All right, three, two, one, and break. All right, going a little heavier for this next lower body move. We're gonna perform a kettlebell suitcase squat. Feet are hip width apart. Kettlebell's in my right hand. Suitcase, because it's just on the right side. Either arm out straight or at the hip, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Core is tight. Now, sit back, weight in nice my and hips, tight. and back up. Yes. We're gonna split. 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other. Killer lower body move. Ready, begin. Focus on keeping those shoulders square here and not allowing that shoulder holding the kettlebell to drop down, right? So again, we talk bracing. It's like using your core, it's like a balloon. You're filling up all the way around. Focus on keeping it tight. It's not only gonna work your ab muscles, but it's also gonna protect that lower back. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch, switch sides. Switch sides. Whew. Move right Legs into are it. gonna feel it here. Oh yeah. It's all right, we gotta, without being challenged, there's no change. We're definitely challenging those legs right here. Ooh. How many can you get? Uh. It's not you versus us, it's you versus you. You versus the you from yesterday. Trying to get a little better today. Five, four, three, two, one, and break. Nice. Next up, we're gonna work our back with a kettlebell crusher row. I'm gonna go a little lighter for this one. We're going to grab that kettlebell on both sides, squeezing from the bell. Feet are hip width apart. I'm gonna bend over. So not only am I grabbing it, but I'm squeezing it together here. Now I'm gonna pull back from my elbows and then extend my arms back down. As many as you can on this one for 45 Ooh. seconds. Ready and begin. So not only pulling back, but again, keeping that constant tension, like almost like you're trying to pop that kettlebell, right? You're pressing it in at the same time. Getting that constant breathing going, no breath holding. Back stays straight, that 45 degree angle. We've been here a couple times today. Weight in my hips. Been working my back as well as my forearms and my biceps. Oh yeah. All compound moves today. Very efficient, a lot of working in a short period of time. Come on, Tribe, let's go. You got 10 more seconds on this one. Come on, finish strong. How many can you get? Those arms are feeling good. For three, two, one, zero. Oh. All right, we're gonna move to the floor for the next one, and I'm actually gonna grab a heavier weight. We're going to move to our backs. Bring that kettlebell with me. We're gonna perform a kettlebell hip up. So now I'm gonna bring that kettlebell up, place it on my hips for the extra resistance. My heels are nice and close to my body here. And I'm gonna drive off of my midfoot, squeeze my glutes at the top, and then return the way back down under control using that extra resistance. Doing this one for 45 seconds and begin. Again, all the way up, all the way down. Squeeze those glutes up at the top. If you're feeling it in your quads, scoot those heels back closer to your bum. That's a great point. We're working our core, our lower back, glutes and hamstrings. Yes, your quads are gonna get some work, but we don't want them taking over. So if you need to, take a second, pause, and scoot those heels closer to you. Control on the way down as well as the way up. Ooh, starting to feel it burning that backside. Booty's burning, I like it. 10 more it. seconds, let's go. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. You can stay right where you're at for the next one, moving to an upper body move. Again, I'm gonna grab that kettlebell in that rack position so that bell sits on the back of my hand. Keep my feet flat on the floor, opposite arm is out. I'm gonna press kettlebell chest press straight up, keeping that, starting with that elbow at a 45 and then pressing where that kettlebell ends in the midline of my body. Ooh, that one's too heavy. I'm gonna switch. Oh, <laughs> there, and then that's totally all right. See what you did there. I encourage you to do the same if you need to. 30 seconds each side and begin. I want you to inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. And while it is called a chest press, yes, so we're working our chest, but also working our shoulders, our triceps, that big group of three muscles in the backside of the upper arm. 
a little core work here, keeping balance with the unilateral exercise. One into the next here. Like I said, 30 seconds each arm. Burn it out. And switch. All right, same move. Try not to have much downtime here. Reposition that kettlebell and hit it. And again, when we say 45 degree angle on that elbow, we don't want that elbow tucked into the body and we don't want it flared out. So That's right. it's kind of right in between the two. Helps us to one, um, get equal resistance on multiple muscle groups and not overload any one, but also this helps to protect that shoulder. We have that. Five, four, three, two, one, and break. Yes, okay. protect those shoulders. Okay, next up, we're gonna hold that one kettlebell from the bell straight up. Now I'm gonna start with my legs out straight. We're gonna give you two different ab variations here. I'm gonna bring my shoulder blades up off the ground. Now I'm gonna bring both knees up and return my legs back straight. And notice I'm bringing one leg up and returning it to starting position. You decide which variation is best for you and begin. One other thing tool to work with here is, do you keep your feet up or do you rest them on the ground That's in between right. sets? So if you wanna really challenge yourself, keep them up. If you're having a hard time and you just wanna make it to that finish line, feel free to rest them in between. Everybody's different. Just keep pushing yourself. You're the only one that can push yourself. Day in and day out, putting in that work so you can get closer to those goals. Come on, Chad, let's go. Thinking you about don't what, have a lot left. Thinking about what brought you here today. Focus on that why. It's gonna be the thing that gets you through here. Last few seconds. In five, four, three, two, one, and break. <laughs> nice job. And that is it. The work hard part is over. Yes. Nice work to you out there, Has Fit Tribe. I'm done. Now we're gonna reward our bodies with a little cool down, just some restorative work that'll help alleviate some of that next day soreness and to help increase our mobility flexibility. First one is going to be a toe touch to a scarecrow. It might also be a shin touch or a knee touch. Let's see here. Feet are hip width apart. We're going to Hinge at our hips, nice and relaxed, reaching as far down as you can. If that's the floor, great. If that's your toes, ankles, shins, knees, reach as far as you can. Hold and come up with straight arms. As you come up, hips come forward. Now with those straight arms, we're gonna pull down from your elbows and your hands. As we pull back like somebody's behind you, gently pulling back, that's that scarecrow. Now dive back down into the toe touch. They're really working on all these posterior chain muscles. They got a lot of work in today. And coming back up, straight arms, all the way back with those hands and elbows, pulling back gently as those hands and elbows come down. One last one here. Hopefully everyone, you're getting just a little deeper as you get looser. Big deep breaths. And straight arms up. And pulling back, opening up that chest. Great move for our posture, rotator cuffs, and relax. All right, we are gonna move to the floor for the next one. We're gonna do a kneeling hip flexor stretch. Then we're gonna come to a kneeling position. One knee is up, one is down. I'm gonna flex my glutes, contract them nice and tight, my backside and my abs. Poke them, are they tight? All right, once they're tight, let's move forward. Not gonna take a lot. I'm maintaining tightness when you feel that stretch throughout your hip flexor and quadricep. This is a static stretch, so we're just gonna hold this one. Good posture. Keep those glutes and abs tight. For three, two, one. All right, same move. Opposite side now. Again, start with those tight glutes and abs and then slowly come forward. And don't be alarmed if one side's a little tighter than the other. I know that's the case for me right now. His left side is a little tighter. Actually, everything feels pretty terribly evenly. Terrib terrible on both sides. There yeah, we go. So. so You're not alone out there, Hasbro <laughs> Tribe. We're feeling it too. It really just depends, but yeah. For three, two, one, zero. Ooh-wee. Back up to our feet for this last one. We're going to perform a chest opener. I'm going to take my fingers and interlock them behind my back. And now I'm going to pull my shoulders and chest 
away from my spine, on back. Just hold here. And if you're feeling good here, you can get a little extra stretch by bending over and allowing those hands to come over. You decide if you want the little extra stretch. Big deep breaths here. For five, four, three, two, one. And that is it. Come nice up work. slowly. Come up slowly. If that's the one that you were doing. Come up slowly. Exactly. Woo. Great work today. Way to complete this session. One of the, our recommendations so you can stay on track is to follow a complete fitness program. That's right. And those fitness programs can be found on the HasFit app. So download it now and check it out. Don't forget to like us on your favorite social media channel. Until next time, I'm Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia. And we will see you at your next workout.